about tracking the cost of our inventory. Whether we use the perpetual or the periodic inventory system, we need to know how much our inventory cost us. By way of review, the perpetual inventory system is where we perpetually update our inventory. So when we purchase things, we buy them in an account called the inventory. And when we sell things, there are two journal entries. One books a sale and one updates the inventory account. At year end, we take a physical inventory and that tells us our spoilage, what got lost or what got stolen. In the periodic inventory system, we buy things into an account called purchases and we don't update the inventory account when things are sold, we just book the sale. Then we wait to the end of the year, we take a physical inventory, we take our beginning inventory plus our purchases, that gives us our total goods that are available for sale. We subtract what was left on hand and that must give us our cost of goods sold. So big picture the concept is beginning inventory plus what we bought gives us our goods that are available for sale. And then at the end of the year, either we sold them or they're left in any inventory. It's just a different mechanical approach whether we perpetually update our inventory or whether we wait to the end of the period. So let's look at some sample journal entries about how we track the actual cost of our inventory. The perpetual inventory system directly adjusts the inventory account for any transaction that affects inventory, such as freight costs, returns, and discounts. The periodic inventory system, on the other hand, does not do this. Instead, it creates separate accounts for purchases, freight costs, returns, and discounts. So first, let's look at the perpetual inventory system. Let's say we buy some inventory for $105. We debit inventory, credit accounts payable, and the terms are 210 net 30. Then if the terms of that shipment were FOB shipping point, that means that we were responsible for the shipping costs and we include those as part of our inventory costs. Then let's pretend like we're dissatisfied with some of the inventory, so we ship back $5. We reduce our accounts payable and we directly reduce our account inventory to reflect the fact that we've returned $5 worth of stuff. Then on January 10th, on the 10th day, we finally pay. That inventory originally uh, we bought for 105, so the account payable was originally 105. We reduced it by five, so we actually owe them only $100 now. But since we paid it within 10 days, we take a 2% discount. So we take that account payable off our books, we write a check for 98 and the $2 that purchase discount we got for paying the bill early enough, we use that to directly decrease the cost of our inventory. Now let's look at the same series of transactions, but assume we use the periodic inventory system. When we buy stuff, we buy it into an account called purchases instead of inventory. If the terms are FOB shipping point, that means we're responsible for the shipping. But instead of debiting our inventory account, we debit a separate account called Freight In. Because as we said, the periodic inventory system doesn't blend everything into the inventory account. Instead, it sets up different accounts for purchases, freight costs, returns, and discounts. Then we return $5 worth of stuff. We reduce our account payable just like we did before. But instead of crediting inventory, now we're going to credit that separate account called Purchase Returns and Allowances. And finally, we pay the bill within 10 days, so we take that account payable off our books. Since we paid it so quickly, we take a 2% discount, so we only write a check for 98. And in the periodic system, instead of reducing our inventory costs directly, we credit an account called Purchase Discounts. So since we don't update our inventory when we use the periodic inventory system, we don't know what our cost of goods sold is until the end of the period. And then we take our beginning inventory plus the purchases during that period and that gives us our total goods that were available for sale. We take a physical inventory so we know what's left and that tells us what our cost of goods sold must be. Goods available for sale minus any inventory gives us cost of goods sold. So let's look at a cost of goods sold schedule for PW Audio Supply. Their beginning inventory was $36,000 plus their purchases. Here's their purchase returns and allowances. That's the stuff they turned back. Purchase discounts. That's the stuff they paid for early enough that they got to take a 1% or a 2% discount. Add in the freight costs and that gives them the total goods purchased. Inventory at the beginning 
plus purchases gives them total goods available for sale minus their ending inventory gives them their cost of goods sold for the year. So in concept, whether we're using the perpetual or the periodic inventory system, we're taking beginning inventory and cost of goods purchased and that gives us total goods available for sale. What got sold is cost of goods sold and what's left is any inventory. The difference is that the perpetual inventory system is tracking this cost of goods sold all throughout the year, whereas the periodic inventory system waits to the end. The second difference is that in the meantime, the perpetual inventory system reduces inventory whenever we return stuff and when we pay for stuff early so that we take a discount. It also increases inventory when we pay for freight. On the other hand, periodic inventory system keeps different accounts for purchases, freight costs, returns and allowances, and purchase discounts. That's all there is to it. Hope this helps.